today. Um, but let's let's start out with the biggest topic. Um, and I, I don't I don't know if the I mean I guess it's college football, but it's it's more NCAA, right? The Pac-12 boycott that we discussed, I want to say two weeks ago, I guess it was, and we didn't really take it seriously because, good gracious, the the revenue stuff was a, a little crazy, a little, you know, all right, all of the other stuff, totally fine with, no big deal. Yep. But we'll go through, I'll, I'll read off just, you know, four of the, of the Pac-12 player demands. Uh, they are demanding this, or they are going to sit out the season. And there are players on every team in the Pac-12. There's a total of 400-something players that are going to do, knock this out, right? They they want to be a part of this. They want to boycott if their demands are not met. What they're saying is they want player-approved health standards enforced by a third party. They want 50% of revenue distributed evenly to athletes. They want medical insurance for six years post-college, which we were fine with, and then reduced pay of Larry Scott, coaches, and administrators. Now, I am... The one that gets me is the 50% of revenue, and then the second one that gets me is reduced pay of Larry Scott, coaches, and administrators. The the 50% of revenue the way that it is currently set up, is illegal, federally. Because it would go against Title IX. You can't do that the way that the law is currently constructed. If you were to do that, they would basically have to do away with all women's sports. Other than maybe at Tennessee with women's basketball and UConn with women's basketball. Those are the only two women's sports that I know of in the entire country that turn a profit. Everything else loses money. So, that part doesn't make sense. The other part, the reduced pay of Larry Scott, coaches and administrators, those guys have contracts. Like, I don't know of anybody that has a contract that ain't going to make the money that they have on that contract unless they do something to well, not earn I mean, it. here's the question is how does he get paid for his contract if the football season's canceled? And see, that's a good point. But There are clauses in that contract that would cause that contract to be broken. Oh yeah. I assure you of that. So so the money the money thing is interesting because they they can't tie it to revenue like professional sports. That's right. just not going to be possible. Well, even even still, the, the NFL doesn't get fifty percent of revenue, right? No, it's forty eight. But yeah. but that's that is fifty percent because that ba- it there's basically a four percent operations cost. Okay. Okay. So like that's that's just what it costs to run the league is 4% and the owners give half of, you know, half of that and the players give half of that. So they both get 48% shares. So it's, it's even, um, <clears throat> what they need to do instead of a percentage is demanded amount of money. All right. Yeah. If, because then Larry Scott makes several million dollars. Okay. Grossly overpaid. Him and a lot of other people grossly overpaid. Well, if you cut their pay a couple million bucks, and let's say you've got a hundred football players on every roster, I don't think they're all a hundred man deep. Okay, twelve teams, it's twelve hundred people. I don't know. Pay everybody a hundred grand. Uh, even even then, you're, you're looking at you're looking at a hundred and twenty million dollars. So I don't know how to come up with that. Like, I don't know what these guys want, but the best bet is to come up with a dollar figure to yeah. demand. Because, because I mean, if you say, I want Larry Scott's pay cut by $3 million, and you're going to divide that $3 million, it costs us 1,200, you know, student athletes that play football, then we're having a different conversation. I, I actually would be, I actually would be okay with that because I don't think the guy's earning his money. Um, you know, there would be a way, but if you come up with a dollar figure, then you can at least start putting pen to paper to do math on it. You you can't do the math on revenue splits. Not in college, not the way the A, we we have no real way of tracking how much revenue is sports related revenue. You know? Yeah. If if you sell a T if Oregon sells a T shirt and it's just Oregon University, it's not Oregon football, you know, it's at a it's, but it's all being bought by fans coming to watch football games. Is that football revenue? Or is it school revenue? It's a that's a 
So like that, that's the problem. <laughs> that's it, you know, the problem. That's where this all revenue, goes. Revenue is a bad idea. Everything else they've asked for is pretty reasonable, by the way. Yeah, I, like, I agree these, with that. Um, these aren't things that I'm upset about or I would be upset about if I was an administrator. Um, we just need to we just need to make sure you, you, you're a little bit more intelligent about what you're asking for. Well, let's and yeah, let's right. let's Don't, go through these. Let's let's go through this whole list, and it's not super super long, so we'll we'll okay. dive into it. Uh, the first part: health and safety protections. Right, COVID nineteen protections. It says allow option not to play during the pandemic without losing athletic eligibility or spot on team's roster. Uh, I don't think that's actually been a problem. I think everybody's been pretty on board with that. Um, number two: prohibit or void COVID nineteen agreements that waive liability. I think across the board, we've we've, we've almost we've gotten done that, that already. Point. Yeah, we're we're talking about that already. Mandatory safety standards, including COVID-19 measures, uh, is one player-approved health and safety standards enforced by a third party selected by players to address COVID-19 as well as serious injury, abuse, and death. So, all of that, totally reasonable. The health and safety stuff, totally get it. Totally fine with that. Um, Which, by the way, Yeti304 said, did some of the WSU players get dismissed from the team because they support the boycott? Uh, Not dismissed from the team. And you know what? I've got it pulled up from Pete Thamel. Um, da, 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 there was something crazy about this. Uh, it was opt-outs, right? Oh, yeah. Hold on. The situation of uh, Washington State boils down to this. Players who have requested to opt out of the season cannot take part in any team activities. You cannot True. choose to opt out for health and safety reasons and still lift, practice, and be in the locker room, weight room. So, yeah. basically, their their scholarships are still being honored. 100%. And they're going to be on the roster, but they do not get to participate in team activities if they are part of this movement. If they are going if to it, sit out. If they choose to opt out, yeah. Then you so. don't get to use the the facilities that that you're saying aren't safe enough. And that's okay. Yeah. That's which all is, right. Which that's is totally not, fair. Yeah. It's just it's just you can't ask for everything. Um Joseph said, damn, six years you got to start uh, getting into putting up reserve liabilities on the books if something goes seriously wrong with COVID and or brain injuries. We we don't have a problem with the insurance stuff. That's nope, I don't have I don't have a problem fair. with insurance stuff going six years out. That does not scare me at all. These people make a lot of money. They can give health. And, and here's the problem. Most of these universities are attached to hospitals. So once again, like scholarships, it's a little bit of shopping at the company store, man. Yeah. Like, yes, you can say that MRI costs $12,000, but really it costs a technician that you're paying I don't know, 30 bucks an hour for. So you know, it's just one of those things where it's hard to it's hard to argue with some of this stuff. Yeah. Now, here is where we can start to argue. Number two, it says protect all sports. It says preserve all existing sports by eliminating excessive expenditures. Before I dig into it, the reason that you picked this school is is really because of the expenditures, typically. Right? I mean, it let's not go crazy. Uh, no, they're saying administration is an expenditure. Well, it's so it's, here's here's what we go with. Number one, it says Larry Scott, administrators and coaches, to voluntarily and drastically reduce excessive pay. Now, we all agree. Larry Scott makes an unbelievably ridiculous amount yeah. of money and for and, the and job that he spends he's doing. a lot on his facilities that are not necessary. Yeah, the, the Pac-12 network stuff is, is ridiculous. Uh, yes. Matt, Matt said just print more money. And Joseph said, uh, who got new lighting for the living room and the WCE logo? That SBR <laughs> check cleared. No, it ain't cleared yet. That's my wife's uh, Father's Day present to me. So, <laughs> But I got it set up underneath the uh, the TV. So I figured I'd, uh, I'd drop that thing in. Um, number two, it says end performance and academic bonuses. It, I'm not sure why that's an issue. Because um, it's money that goes to coaches and staff that should be going to the players that, that actually are getting the bonuses, that are w- awarding the bonuses. If if a school has really good academics, those some of those coaches have built in bonuses, right? Yeah. But but the players all earn earn the bonus for the coach. And same thing, they're they're saying that's on the field. It's we we earned the bonus. You shouldn't get paid more because we did a good job. Yeah. I, That's their argument. Not saying I agree with it. That's the argument that they're giving. Yeah. No, I, okay. I'm with you. Number three, end lavish facility expenditures and use some endowment funds to preserve all sports. It says, quote, uh, or no, star, asterisk, whatever. As an example, 
Stanford University should reinstate all sports discontinued by tapping into their $27.7 billion endowment. Billion dollar endowment. Yep. I kind of hate that these schools all cry, poor, 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 and we got to cut sports, cut sports, cut sports. And they've got these ungodly endowments. Now, not all schools have those endowments. That's the issue. Agreed. But Stanford absolutely does. And they're in a world in which they can make four phone calls and raise, you know, $300 million in a, in a matter of minutes. So it's just one of those things where, come on, man. Well, the, the question is how many people that have, that they can call about Stanford stuff uh, actually care anything about the sports that they would be asked to donate. No, to. they don't care anything about it, but they're just going to donate to make sure they're in good standings with the school because they want the, whatever pub that they get. I mean, that's why do people donate to anything? It's not because yeah. everybody doesn't donate to something only because they believe in the cause. We'd yeah. have very few donations. Now you're, you're right. You're right. Uh, number three is end racial injustice in college sports and society. And it's got three things on here. It says form a permanent civic engagement task force made up of our leaders, experts, and of our choice, and university and conference administrators to address outstanding issues such as racial uh, injustice in college sports and in society. Well, the Big Ten has already done this. The Pac-12 probably is working on something like that, I would hope. I don't know if they are or not, but it's not not that bad to ask for that. Yeah, it's not bad at all. So, so once you start getting into the bullet points, it makes sense as a demand. When you say in racial injustice in society, it's just like one of those things where, all right, that's, that's a bit of an ask. I know that I criticize Larry Scott a lot, but if he could pull that off, I'm maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe, 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 uh, maybe I'm wrong. Number two, change the hearts of all men and women. That's yes, what that, you got to do. If the Pac-12 can do that, I will stop talking crap about them. Yeah, as long yeah as we'll give them all the BCS championships <laughs> that we won. All right, uh, number two, in partnership with the Pac-12, 2% of conference revenue would be directed by players to support financial aid for low-income black students, community initiatives, and development programs for college athletes on each campus. No problem with that. The only, the only thing know? I can think of is they're talking about revenue. they got to be talking about the TV contract revenue because yeah. I just don't understand how you equate revenue. Now, if you're just saying whatever your television contract is, we want to per- – but now you're taking 50% and then you're taking 2%. You know, we're we're getting into to how much does, does it take before you, you know, lose the ability to do anything. Uh, number three, form annual Pac-12 Black College Athlete Summit with guaranteed representation of at least three athletes of our choice from every school. Uh, okay. I mean, I, again, I the demands, you know, it, they, they're worded. Um, it just seems like a whole lot of we have to have this and whatnot, and it's it's a little strange. Like, I don't have a problem with this at all. It just seems to come from a a not willing to work with place, and maybe I'm crazy. Well, well I mean, but they don't know how to work with people. They're college students. They they don't have. They're not a like a professional union. They don't have real negotiators. I mean, even like the NFL PA and the MLB PA, like two of the strongest players unions out there. The NBA, they still hire outside representation to explain the needs that they want to them because they don't know everything and their professionals have been doing this for years. Yeah. Yeah. So I get, right. look, I give these guys a lot of credit. One thing for some of these things is you can start these things on your own. Like you want a summit, start a summit between all PAC 12 schools. Just yeah. do it. It's just players. Yeah. You don't have You're to have start the, Pac-12, the organization. You don't have to have the PAC 12 set it up for you. No, they don't have to there. Now I will tell you, that's going to be one of the beefs that I'm going to have with some of this stuff. Some of these things, these guys can do on their own. You're adults. You're all 18 years of age and older, okay? You're capable to do a lot of this stuff on your own. You can organize. We have seen these protests, and so many of them are organized by young people. You can organize a lot of this stuff. You don't need the Pac-12 blessing. Now, what you might want is the Pac-12 shield. You might want the Pac-12's, um, you know, licensing and stuff of that nature to be able to put on there. I'm okay with that. I get that. Yeah. That's a different conversation. If you put this thing together and say, Hey, we want you to sponsor it. We want you to, to endorse this thing and, and acknowledge us as a real thing. That's, 
that's a different conversation than we, we have this idea. We want you to do it. Yeah. Like, uh, okay. All right. I, I get where you're coming from. And I like, I, I get where they're coming from. It just, yeah. it seems, you know, a little crazy. Let me jump in the comments before we jump back over and, and knock out number four here. Uh, Matt Miller on YouTube said, telling the coaches what they make is BS. It should be free market capitalism for coaches and players. Agreed. Uh, Joseph yeah. Gomez said they want their kids in Stanford. Hashtag legacy. And Monster X Gaming said, hey, what you guys talking about? This is like around the horn, but five times better. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. He said we got a nice setup. Hey, we appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. Uh, the Brown Yeti said a lot of this sounds like just give me stuff because I think I earned it. Well, I'm not going to go that far. I think that they have a lot of valid requests. Obviously, yeah. it, college athletes understand, well, especially football players and basketball players, they know that they are worth something, right? They understand that. However, the way that it has been set up for years and years and years, I don't know that it can be torn down in a month, right, before the season gets started. Like, threatening to boycott, threatening to sit out, all that kind of stuff, it, while it does sound good and everybody wants to fight and da 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 there's so many other ramifications that could come from this that, I mean, you got to really sit down and, and there, I mean, it's negotiations. You're going to have to negotiate for a long time, but there is no union. Like they, Northwestern tried this years ago and the federal government said that college athletes were not actually employees that they are given it because of all the different things. And Chris and I, uh, we go back and forth on this all the time. No, not a scholarship is not worth, what they provide to the school. However, uh, they do get a lot of other things, right? You get your, uh, you get the weight workouts, you get all of your meals, you get a place to live, you get this, all that stuff starts to add up after a little while, right? Now, who knows what it's actually worth, but that's what the payment is. If you want to play football in college, here's what you do. Now, let's jump into number four here. Guaranteed medical expense coverage. So, uh, number four is uh, is economic freedom and equity. So, it says, uh, first, guaranteed medical expense coverage. It says, medical insurance selected by players for sports-related medical conditions, including COVID-19 illness, to cover six years after college athletics eligibility ends. Totally fine with that. Like, I, we both agree that that should probably be happening anyway. Uh, and if it's not if it's not six, at least four or something. Yeah. You Something. know, so I don't, I don't know how far you can go back with brain injury stuff. That's the issues. I don't know enough about, but forget that. How, like I blew every ligament, in my leg out at one point in time in high school. And I'm a 37 year old man, almost 38. And I still have problems with my knee that I have to go to Campbell clinic and I have to use my insurance for. So these guys blow a, blow an ACL, blow a, blow an elbow, blow a shoulder, blow something six years from now. Yeah. You should still be covering that for them. Now, yeah. at some point in time, I'm okay with you cutting it off. The fact that they asked for six years and not 12 or 20 is pretty reasonable to me. I'm 20 years removed from mine, and it still hurts like hell. So Yeah, and it, I mean, it's and it's going to hurt like hell. Yeah, and I still time. have prop, like I have problems with it. So yeah. I, I, I fully get that. The medical stuff doesn't bother me. I do think these guys take a risk, and, and they take a chance for their school. That, that doesn't issue at all with me. Uh, the Brown Yeti jumped in and said, I agree with you, but if uh, if you destroy your market, you're worth nothing. And that is 100%. Well, 100%. True. That's why you yeah. can't ask for too much. That's why you do have to have some semblance of a partnership. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing to me that Major League Baseball is able to function because those two organizations, players and owners, hate each other. Yes. Like, like despise hate each other. And I, I have no idea how they're supposed to function or work ever. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. Uh, Monster X Gaming said, will teams continue on playing if players start getting infected or will they be a postponing? It depends on how many players get infected. We, like, and we don't know the answer yeah. to that. I mean, well, if, now we're if your entire, of, we're playing a guessing game. Yeah. If your entire offensive line gets taken out, uh, yeah, there's no yeah, way you can you're going to be postponed. So, well, just cause you're, I mean, you're now taking risks that, that are not real. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're, you're playing a bunch of defensive linemen on offense that haven't never done that before. Your quarterbacks at risk, your receivers at risk, and those defensive linemen are at risk. The other players are at risk because the D linemen don't really know the rules. Like it's just, it, it's just not safe anymore. Yeah, no, you're right. All right, so back over to this. After the insurance, it jumps into name, image, and likeness rights and representation. It says the freedom to secure representation, receive basic necessities from any third party, and earn money for use of our name, image, and likeness rights. 
we're already in the middle of that discussion, right? Yep. So in, in what the NCAA has proposed is preposterous. It's not going to fly. I don't think Congress is going to pass it. But it, eventually this will get done because the NCAA is up against a wall at this point, and they understand, like, okay, we're either going to let states do it on their own or we're going to have to pass something or Congress will have, Somebody will have to pass something. And if they leave it to the states, uh, kids can go wherever they can get the most money, wherever they can do you know the most stuff. And the NCAA is basically going to have to make it a free for all. So that part already already on the uh, like on the way. It's it's coming. Uh, next is fair market pay rights and freedoms, and this is where it gets kind of screwy. Number one, distribute fifty percent of each sport's total conference revenue evenly among athletes in their respective sports. Of course, football will get paid a ginormous amount. Basketball will get paid some, depending upon what school you're at. They'll probably get paid a lot just because the rosters are so small. I mean, you're paying, what, like 12 people? Yeah, but at, at that point, like all of these TV rights are are all built in with basketball and football and baseball and whatever else right yeah that's that's why that's why asking for revenue percentages not, doesn't work right so it says each the sec makes so much money for the sec network and they cover everything so and when it talks about total conference revenue evenly among athletes uh, so that's that's money from the sec championship game that or whatever your your conference title game yeah that's money from uh conference the bowl game? sales uh, from i guess postseason like every yeah you're talking about a lot. So the SEC, it was either last year or the year before that it was like five hundred and sixty four million dollars for the SEC. And the Big Twelve or Big Ten was actually a little bit higher than that. And yeah, that's a lot of money. And it goes back into fourteen different teams, and then you cut the the percentage from what each team gets and what, I mean it's just a you know, it, it's a mess. All right, so uh, so number two here is six-year athletic scholarships to foster undergraduate and graduate degree completion. Now, I am confused about six-year athletic scholarships. Um, obviously, they want we to do, be six years to the four. So, so they want eligibility to be no. They want the scholarships to be six years instead of four. That makes sense. That therefore you can basically get a master's degree on the football scholarship, even though I only play for four years. That makes sense okay. to me. Okay, that does make sense, and uh, I'm fine with that too because you're giving them something that you're buying at the company store. It didn't cost you anything. Yeah, Ben jumps in and said, uh, "So the third string kicker will make the same as the quarterback uh, under this proposal." Yeah, like no, yeah, who, see, whoever's but, on the team. The, the caveat is is. We're going to have the name, image, and likeness along with half the revenue, and that's the issue. Yeah, that's. Hey, a, that half the revenue for the SEC would be roughly twenty million dollars a school that each player, like that, they would divvy up between all the players, and and that would be divvied up between all of the sports. So all the sports, yeah. But all right, so what do you got? Four thousand student athletes on the campus. It's not. It's not like you got a bunch. I mean, four thousand is a lot, though. I mean, it's it's not. Oh, okay. You know, it's not crazy. How many uh, student athletes you think you got? I, well, I mean, let's let's say four thousand. I don't I don't even know that it would be four thousand. We'll say five thousand for easy math. Everybody get four thousand dollars. I'm pulling up. I don't the, think it's uh, five thousand. I'm pulling up the calculator right now. I don't I don't think it's I don't even think it's four thousand. I think I think it's closer to probably two thousand student athletes. So let's do. Yeah, everybody get ten grand. Yeah. So ten thousand dollars. But that student. would take twenty million dollars away from the school. And. Basically, to give everybody would, tinger. See, this is and that would have to be taxable income. And then, at what point does the the school stop uh, giving them a place to live, yeah. giving them no, food? There, there, li- yeah. there lies the there lies the problem. I, I worked in this world for a long time when I was in security. Okay, All right. We we hired security officers and we they made minimum wage. When I started as a security officer, I made minimum wage, I made seven twenty five an hour. Okay. And then I began negotiating the contracts. And every year I could get, you know, 15 cent raise, a, a 17 cent raise, something. I mean, just change. All right. Very small change. I mean, less than a quarter every year for my customer. But that's not enough to give to the employee. Okay. Yeah. And so if I went to my officers and said, hey, we got a 15 cent raise, I'll, I'll give you a dime and we'll keep a nickel. Half of them would be furious with me. They would feel insulted. They would feel like I don't value them. I had these conversations. I tried to do it at one of the sites and, and I had, I had major problems. 
And so my bosses, presidents above me, said, quit trying to give them the raise. Just keep it. Just keep it. They're already working a minimum wage job. How much is 15 cents an hour going to change their life? That's a really shitty way of thinking about it because it's theirs that they earned. But at the end of the day, that's that's true because my client that agreed to that 15 cent raise, that 15 cent raise was like $200,000 a year Yeah, to him. So it, it's one of those things where <clears throat> when you break it all down, it's such a minuscule amount. We could just right now, these guys could get 10 grand out of a bag, man, easier than it would be <clears throat> to, to pay them. They're not going to pay taxes on that. And, and yeah, that, that kicker and that punter could get a, get a bag of $10,000 tomorrow from somebody yeah. at LSU pretty easily. Well, they, and they don't is, have to take the school revenue. It, this is what, uh, so Matt Miller jumped in. He said, I don't think players should be paid from the school or conference. They should a hundred percent be paid for image and likeness though. Yep. Which is 100%. what we've been shouting for this whole time. He said, uh, yep. because if they are paid from the school title nine, which is BS is going to kick in title nine is a federal law. Like yes. that's it, that's the schools did not want it, and yet we have it right because it, otherwise there would be well, no. Reason. We have Title Nine because if we didn't have it, we know what these schools would do. Yeah, there'd be no women's sports. No, there'd be just, no. They just yeah. absolutely would not have women's sports. Yeah, but if you want to have football, you're gonna have to have softball and volleyball and whatever else right. in order to equal the number of scholarships. So. It is what it is. Uh, Matt Miller jumps in and says, I always thought for all sports, each uh, each sport should have a salary based on, or sorry, salary cap based on what they made and the coaches get to decide pay based on production. Whoo, that's a lot of responsibility for some of these coaches. I don't know that I yeah, would. Yeah, you're asking coaches to be good at football and good at math. Yeah. Well, There's not, a reason not just math, that all but... these analytical coaches right now have a bunch of MIT students sitting up in the booth. Yeah, because they don't know shit about analytics and they can't do math. Yes, you are correct. You hey, are let's correct. let's move on. Look, look yeah, we hold got, on, hold on. Let me let me get too long, Gary. Come yeah. on, let me let me get on the last ones. Elimination of all policies and practices restricting or deterring our freedom of speech, our ability to fully participate in charitable work, um, and our freedom to participate in campus activities outside of mandatory athletics participation. I, okay, like that's totally fine. I, all of this crap where the NCAA bans kids from doing like GoFundMe's to raise profits for charities and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we all think that's bunk anyway. Uh, number four, ability of players of all sports to transfer one time without punishment, and additionally, in cases of abuse or serious negligence, uh, we're getting ever so close to having the one-time transfer rule anyway. So, you know, that's negligent here, or not negligent, uh, that's uh, whatever. That's happening. Just read, just read through them. We number five. Comment, some of yep. these we agree with, some of these we don't. Let's number go. five, ability to complete eligibility after participating in a pro draft if player goes undrafted and foregoes professional participation within seven days of the draft. Um, we think that's likely to happen anyway. We have an example of that uh, already at Arizona State. I don't State think that's Hunter. likely to happen, by the way. I absolutely don't think that's likely to happen. You don't think so? No. Hell no. I think the schools will fight that like crazy. And I don't know why, by the way. I don't understand why, but... Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then number six is due process rights. It, we so agree with that. Have. Yeah, I mean, they, they basically have got that anyway, but yeah. okay. like it, So the majority of this stuff, like, we're totally on board with. No problem. Yes. Some of it, though, like, if they had just kept some of that stuff out, like... I we, want them to get paid. I want them... Yeah. I've been fighting like crazy for them to get paid. You can't tie it to revenue. Nope. It's just not a smart way of doing it. Nope. It just doesn't work. It just no, does not work. It, it just, it won't ever work that way. Mm -mm. I think it's weird that pro sports are tied. The best pro contract out there is Major League Baseball, and it's not tied to revenue. Yeah. And when they try, when they tried to tie it to revenue this year, because the, the revenue was going to be so down, out. the players yeah. lost it. So, yeah. all right, let's, uh, let's move on from there. We got five more topics that we want to hit. Jesus but, Christ. No, I, I knew that all of these were going to be super fast. Super fast. Uh,